there's a real problem uh, happening in more Mediterranean countries right now. It's been happening for the past decade. It's a plague. They are being plagued by the Vespa Velutina, which is a fancy word for the Asian hornet. It's a massive hornet that attacks other little bees and it's extremely invasive and extremely aggressive. And anybody who has vineyards or orchards or any crop that's worth anything, it's a serious problem. And it's very hard to get rid of it. We have that on a smaller scale in our little place in Spain, which we go back and every summer, it's there. And I experienced it a couple years ago. I went to get a pear off the pear tree, a beautiful pear. And uh, when I grabbed it, the whole thing just crumbled in my hand. I was lucky that the hornet wasn't actually in there because they would sting you as well and they're dangerous. But what he does is he burrows in there into the fruit and he eats the whole core, the, the meat of the fruit, and then he leaves. And he just leaves you with an appearance there of a fruit. They're nasty, vicious little invasive species. And it makes me wonder as well, as I'm here in a country where they predict in the next 10 years, decade, these churches will be empty because the average age of the clergy is the same as the average age of the daily mass goer. And that average age is a couple years below the Irish life expectancy. It's a fancy way of saying in 10 years there's going to be empty churches. And if you look at the demographics and you look around, it kind of makes sense and it seems like it's going there, but I believe there's hope. Like the, these first two rows here, they're good that the girls are sitting in the front because this is a bit of a sign of hope here in the church. The youth are reacting well and it is, it, they are taking to it. But we have to ask ourselves this question right now because we're preparing ourselves for our final encounter with God. Why is my heart not burning with love? Do I recognize the presence of Christ in His Word when I hear it? Because this is a Word that was inspired by the Holy Spirit, and it's the same Holy Spirit that's teaching you what's in this Word when you read it. So when I approach the Word and my heart doesn't burn, or I'm not affected by the Word, I have to ask myself, am I recognizing His presence here? Do I recognize His presence in the Eucharist. 2019 Pew Research did a study and 68% of Americans do not believe in the real presence of the Eucharist. They think it's a symbol. 68%. So we ask ourselves right now, I'm gonna examine my conscience. Is my heart not burning because I don't recognize his true presence in the Eucharist? If I were to recognize His true presence in the Eucharist and His true presence in the Word, every single Mass that I would attend would be different, and I would probably be attending more Masses in my life, and I'd probably be telling more people about this Mass. Ironically and sarcastically, the French poet Arthur Rembrandt said of us Catholics, asking the question, he says, you Catholics are the light of the world, but the world's in darkness. Whose fault is that? It was a jab he was giving at us. But it's a good examination of conscience. If we're the light of the world and the world's in darkness, whose fault is that? If he doesn't need very many to light this place up. Because he says, I came to bring fire on this earth. And I wish it was burning ablaze. And the only way this world's going to be burning is if us, us Catholics are recognizing him where he's to be recognized. And we're taking him into our heart. And that's when our hearts start burning. That's zeal. Zeal and fervor. And that's what they're dying for. Because we're not up against much. We don't have a very hard competition. Because if they're promising happiness to little children, if they get mutilated when they're 13 years old, that that's something that can happen, and they're saying that's, that's going to make you happy, our competition's not that hard, lads. Because we're promising them true happiness. In Him contains all sweetness. This is the bread that comes down from heaven. It's His true body, blood, soul, and divinity. That's what I'm bringing them. The competition's not that hard. But are we afraid? And through fear have I closed myself off, and I'm not recognizing him where he's, where he's to be found. There's a very inspirational Spanish bishop, Manuel Garcia. When he was 12 years old, he felt the call to be a priest, and he went to seminary and he learned a lot. But his turning moment was 
He was in a church preparing for a sermon, and it was an old abandoned church. Very few people went to it. And he said he saw the tabernacle extremely dirty with cobwebs on it. The altar cloths were ripped. The oil lamp was just dripping. And he felt in that moment that he learned more in those two minutes than his whole seminary studies of what the love of God is and to what extent he puts himself through to be with us. And he became the priest of the abandoned tabernacles. The priest of the abandoned tabernacles. You see, that's a sign. Because we are plagued. And this is where we're going to fill in the blanks. I'm not talking about a bee that's eating fruit and destroying crops. I'm talking about something that's way more dangerous, that's separating us from the source of life, eating the core of what's most important. You see, if we're separated from the Eucharist, we're separated from everything. Full stop. There's nothing that you can say to me that's going to go against that. If you're separated from the Eucharist, you're separated from everything. And so if we're separated from the presence of Christ, it's game over. And what is it in our life that is separating us from Him? That's making us abandon Him. That's what we have to ask ourselves right now. This is where it's all hanging. This is where it's all hanging. And this is where we have to fight so that we may truly be that light in a dark world and that we can present ourselves to the Lord and say, Lord, look at what you've given me. You've given me absolutely everything. And this is my response. So we'll ask our Blessed Mother to fill our hearts like the two disciples of Emmaus, that we may recognize him as he explains scripture to us, and we also may see his presence here in the Eucharist. Amen.